We're back with New York Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. She joins us this morning from the campaign trail in West Des Moines. Good morning to you, Senator. Good morning. You support universal background checks, a ban on large magazine and assault weapons, and an anti-gun trafficking law. You need Republican votes to get all those things through Congress. What can actually pass now? You know, I think things are changing uh, since kids have been marching out of their schools and marching on Washington and are really demanding action. You've seen a level of advocacy that I've never seen before. And I think if Mitch McConnell would have the courage to call us back into Washington to vote, we would pass the universal background checks bill that's already passed the House. And we would pass the bill that I wrote, which is anti-gun trafficking, uh, which the last time we voted on it got 58 votes. We only needed 60, so we're only two votes shy. And I believe we have the momentum and the advocacy behind us today to pass that as well. What about red flag laws? Your colleague in New York, Chuck Schumer, has said they are ineffective cop-outs. I think you can pass a red flag law, but it's insufficient. Uh, what we really need to do is also pass a uh, ban on assault we weapons, particularly the military-style weapons that have resulted in people losing their lives within seconds, uh, and then the large magazines. Many of your Republican colleagues would agree on red flags being insufficient. They also don't think background checks necessarily would be. Um, the argument is for more tools for law enforcement. So do you support making domestic terrorism a federal crime, and would you sign on to Dick Durbin's bill to increase resources to combat it? Absolutely. Uh, and as president, I would direct my Department of Justice to investigate white supremacy and other domestic terrorist groups uh, to infiltrate them, to make sure we know if they're planning attacks, and to uh, absolutely combat white supremacy in society, because these groups are domestic terrorists. So in talking about white supremacy, you and some of your colleagues and competitors have been linking the president's rhetoric to emboldening white supremacists. You said he is emboldening white supremacists, his entire presidency, and his campaign. Are you actually saying that President Trump is responsible for the killings in El Paso and Ohio? What I'm saying is that his words have consequences. And the words he has been using have been hateful and divisive and racist and has truly emboldened white supremacy and hate crimes across this country. Since President Trump's been elected, hate crimes have increased, certainly across my state and across the country, against all groups. Uh, more racism, more anti-Semitism, more white supremacy, uh, more anti-Muslim, anti-immigrant, anti-refugees. And it's changing who we are as a nation, and that's one of the reasons I'm running for president. But, we need but a president in terms of that who will bring us back together again. In terms of the name calling and putting it in the political context, don't you think that is ratcheting up the rhetoric rather than having cooler heads prevail? What President Trump has done is ratcheted up the rhetoric. When he's at a rally in Florida and someone says, what are you going to do with immigrants? And someone shouts, kill them, shoot them. President Trump laughed. So he is not leading us in the right direction. Uh, he has used words like infestation. He's used words like invasion. Uh, that is creating a climate where uh, people are literally today fueled by anger and hate. They are hunting down other people using weapons of war. That's what we're up against right now. And President Trump will not stand up to the NRA, will not stand up to the gu gun manufacturers well, what about, uh, to but, get but, these guns off the streets. Well, what about, though, what Joaquin Castro, the congressman, did this week with publishing the names of some of President Trump's top donors? It's publicly available information, but some would say he was targeting these individuals. Is that helpful or is that dangerous, given what you're describing? Those are his choices, not mine. Uh, I will call out racism when I see it. I will call out white supremacy when I see it. I will call out hate, and I will stand up against it in every form. I want to ask you about uh, New York financier Jeffrey Epstein. He is an accused 
child molester, pedophile, sex trafficker. He committed suicide while in federal custody. Uh, the FBI and IG are investigating. Do you think the U.S. government has failed his victims? Well, I'm concerned. Uh, these survivors deserved a day in court. They deserved justice. Uh, they deserve to um, speak out against uh, this perpetrator. And it is a shame uh, that he committed suicide. I do think there needs to be a full investigation about why he was taken off the terror watch, excuse me, why he was taken off the suicide watch list. I think it's uh, a strange decision given that he attempted suicide once already. Uh, I want to know why he was left in a circumstance where suicide was even possible. Um, I think it needs a full investigation. Senator Gillibrand, thank you.